And now, your prayer intentions with author Peter and Jimmy. Hello and welcome to Your Prayer Intentions. Very happy to be here as we pray for your prayer intentions. And I got to say, I was I was looking at the scripture readings for this week. As you know, we've been doing the scripture readings. We did a bit of a change where I tend to talk about the scripture readings, then something special that I might want to do so I don't get repetitive. I noticed the theme. And the theme is something that's actually deep in my mind this week and was deep it on my mind as I was taking a look at something. So sometimes, I don't know if you ever do this. If I'm reading the Bible, if after I've read my scripture passages, if i am got a Bible, I will look at the concordance, I'll look at the introductions because there's various different editions of it. And at St. Uh, Bernard's Parish, at St. Camilla's Church, there's a particular edition of the Bible that was left there from adoration. They left it because they knew I would read it all the time. When the adoration, the side chapel was closed and the people took everything that was, you know, the stuff that was in there pretty much. That Bible was left because it was known I read it a lot. And I was reading how it was put together and basically there had been a revision of the King James Version. And then they took that revision and made a Catholic version of it. And it was a lot of scholarship, a lot of things going in there. And it mentioned a prayer called the Prayer of, of Manasseh and a little bit about this guy. And I'm going to bring this up because I'm going to mention this prayer a little later after I do the readings here. And he was, if you read your Bible, he was a very sinful king. He had done some horrible, horrible things. And God ended up, he was considered one of the worst of the worst. And God ended up smiting him a bit. And he was dragged away in chains and so forth and imprisoned. And he repented. And he made a, uh, a fervent prayer to God. And God, because of his repentance, God ended up showing mercy to him. But it, the Bible does not mention what the prayer was. Now, in some editions of the Greek Septuagint, the early stuff, and in an appendix in the Latin Vulgate, you can see the prayer. And in the Apocrypha of the King James Bible, it's in there. And Clement the Eighth included the book in the appendix to the Vulgate, saying it should be continued to read, lead, read lest it perish entirely. But it's not, and there are bits of it that are occasionally used in the uh, lectionary over the course of the year. And I want to read this prayer to you, and then I'm going to read you the scriptures for this week, because in a lot of it is the same theme. And here's the prayer of Manasseh. And remember, this is the guy who was king in Israel and was horrible and had been smitten by God. The prayer goes like this. O Lord God, O Lord Almighty God of our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of their righteous seed, who has made heaven and earth with all the ornament thereof, who has bound the sea by the word of thy commandment, who has shut up the deep and sealed it by thy terrible and glorious name, who all men fear and tremble before thy power, for the majesty of thy glory cannot be borne in thy ain't. Be threatening towards sinners is importable, but thy merciful promise is unmeasurable and unsearchable, for thou art the most high Lord of great compassion, long-suffering, very merciful, and repentance of the evils of men. Thou, O Lord, according to thy great goodness, has promised repentance and forgiveness to them that have sinned against thee, and of thine infinite mercy has appointed repentance unto sinners, that they may be saved. Thou, therefore, O Lord, that art the God of the just, has not appointed repentance to the just, as to I Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which have not sinned against thee, but have reported repentance unto me, that I am a sinner. For I have sinned above the number of the sands of the sea. My transgressions, O Lord, are multiplied. My transgressions are multiplied, and I am not worthy to but hold in the sea the height of heaven for the multitude of mine iniquities. I am bowed down with many iron bands that I cannot lift up mine head, neither have any release, for I have provoked thy wrath and have done evil before thee. I did not thy will, neither kept I thy commandments. 
I have set up abominations that have multiplied offenses. Therefore I bowed the knee of my heart, beseeching thee of thy grace. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I acknowledge my iniquities. Wherefore I humbly beseech thee, forgive me, O Lord, forgive me, and destroy me not with mine iniquities. Be not angry with me forever by reserving evil for me. Neither condemn me to the lower parts of the earth, for thou art the God, even the God of them that repent. And in me thou wilt shew all thy goodness, for thou wilt save me that I am unworthy according to thy great mercy. Therefore I will praise thee forever all the days of my life, for all the powers of the heavens do praise thee, and thine is the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now I think that's a spectacular prayer, whether that's the actual text of the prayer or not, of what he said. And I want you to put that in the back of your heads as I, because I want to read you the gospel. And then I'm going to touch on some of the other readings that are here. Actually, we'll start with, we'll start with all, we'll do all three readings. The reading from Isaiah this week. From Isaiah chapter 56, verse 1 and then 6 to 7. Thus says the Lord, observe what is right and do what is just. For my salvation is about to come. My justice is about to be revealed. The foreigners who join themselves to the Lord minister unto him, loving the name of the Lord and becoming his servants, all who keep the Sabbath free from profanation and to hold my covenant. Them I will bring to my holy mountain and make a joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offerings and sacrifices will be acceptable on my altar, for my house shall be called a house of prayer for all peoples. The second reading comes from the letter of the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I am speaking to you Gentiles, inasmuch as I am the apostle of the Gentiles. I glory in my ministry in order to make my race jealous, and thus save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from death? For the gifts and the call of God are irrevocable, just as you once disobeyed God, but now have received mercy because of their disobedience. So now they have now disobeyed, in order that by virtue of the mercy shown to you, they too may receive mercy. For God delivered all to disobedience that he might have mercy on them all. And now here is the gospel from Matthew chapter 15. At the time Jesus withdrew to the region of Tyre and Sidon, and behold, a Canaanite woman of that district came and called out, Have pity on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But Jesus did not say a word in answer to her. Jesus' disciples came and asked him, Send her away, she keeps calling after us. He said in reply, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But the woman came and did Jesus homage, saying, Lord, help me. He said in reply, It is not right to take the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. She said, Please, Lord, for even the dogs eat the scraps that fall from the table of their masters. Then Jesus said to her in reply, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And the woman's daughter was healed from that hour. Now, all three of those readings talk about the acceptance of the Gentiles to the word of God. Because remember, the children of Israel had been chosen. You, they were to make, be, make themselves separate. And they were told that the Gentiles were a snare to them. And look what's happened with Solomon. Solomon... You know, for all the, his wisdom that God granted him by his request, he still ended up setting up places for people to worship before the idols because of his wives. And he was led astray. Look at Manasseh, who had done horrible, horrible things. I, I read that pair earlier today. To the point where his grandson, or was it his great-grandson, Josiah had to clear out the the temples clear out the idols from the temple and even get rid of the cult prostitutes. They were male cult prostitutes who were operating in the temple. He ended up having to clear out all of that stuff. It was very bad. But again, Jesus had been preaching repentance, repentance, repentance. And here's this woman who was a foreigner, who was of a race that was to be ignored. And Jesus was saying, you know, I'm here to call back the children of Israel. You know, I can't give the food of the children and throw it to the dogs. It's not my, it's not my place to come to you at this time. But she persists in her faith. 
this person, this woman, persisted in her faith that Christ could do something for her daughter. And because of that faith, there was the reward of Christ, of the salvation. Because of the Gentiles' faith, Paul saying, you know, the Gentiles, you're getting, getting the mercy of God. You have received that reward. And I hope that that reward will come to the children, my fellow Jews who have rejected Jesus. And again, over and over, we see that. And then we consider the, uh, again, Isaiah, the foreigners who join the Lord ministering to him. Their offerings will be acceptable on my altar. It's an invitation. And I look at that and then I hear the prayer of Manasseh that I led with. And again, here's somebody who had all of this, had power as a king of Judah, and tossed it all away in terms of the evils that he did. But even he, with repentance, was forgiven by God. And that even though it's not as well known, there are bits of that prayer here that are prayed thousands of years later. And think about that long prayer that I didn't think. think are there times when that could apply to me? And there's another lesson from this. And an important lesson that I want to point out over here. You know, Jesus notes that this was a Canaanite woman. Again, a person outside of Israel. And by any normal standard, any Jew or any follower of Christ who was following Christ at that time while he was there on earth would have figured Christ's mercy does not belong to her. Not going to happen. Yet Christ shows that mercy. And it's a reminder about judging people and judging the state of salvation. And I've mentioned this before that you would not have liked Matthew before Christ called him. You would not have liked Mary Magdalene before Christ called her. You do not know when Christ is going to call the person you deal with, even the person you hate. You do not know when that call from Christ will come, that call that will change a person. So always show some mercy when you're dealing with people, even people who have wronged you, even people who have despised you, even people who have done things to you. Because did not that same thing happen to Christ? Was Christ not hated and despised? Did Christ not suffer when he did not deserve it. That's, that's the difference between him and, and again, Manasseh. Manasseh, did, he prefigures Christ's mercy in the sense that I have done these horrible things and I seek forgiveness. But he doesn't prefigure Christ. Job more prefigures Christ in the sense that Job suffered many things though he was blameless. But when you see Christ in others, even others that you would normally hate, that you would give you grief, you're seeing the mercy that Christ may show them. You're seeing the call that may come. So consider that when you deal with others. And consider the faith that may be there. Because what may have been thought unthinkable will suddenly be thinkable by God when it comes to those who are willing to believe in him and trust him in his mercy. The mercy of Christ is boundless. So is the justice of Christ. But you have to be able to look at yourself in the light of truth and acknowledge, as Manasseh did there, your sin. That is so, so, so important. Now, since this week we had the... Uh, Feast of the Assumption, 
of the Blessed Virgin Mary. In fact, I'm I'm a little late recording, so I'm actually recording this on the Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. We will do for our prayer the fourth glorious mystery, which is the Assumption. Before we do, let us uh, get some prayer requests. And first, our standing prayer requests for the donors at WQPH, and we are so grateful to you. And if you'd like to be one of those to help keep us on the air, head on over to wqphradio.org. Not only will you be able to donate there, but you can find the podcasts of my shows and other shows. Great place to be. We have a standing prayer request for Mary, for Nancy, for Jake, for the local parishes and the priests who serve them, for the uh, intentions of the Dominican Sisters of St. Cecilia, for the two Marianne's, the one what involved with our station and one who has nothing to do with our station. And we have other prayer requests. We have a young lady who has suddenly had issues with her gallbladder. A prayer request for an elderly lady who's been having some issues. A prayer request for the daughter of that elderly lady who got injured helping out that elderly lady, which is ironic. A prayer for a couple that is struggling. A prayer for Christians who are having trouble taking the final steps. There's a private intention, and let me point out, when you, if you send in your prayer requests at wqph893 at comcast.net by email, that's again wqph893 at comcast.net, or if you post them at the prayer wall at wqphradio.org, you don't have to include any details, just private intention is more than enough. And we will very happily put in your prayer request because God knows what you need. And what you're asking for if you don't want to say it out loud. And a prayer request for our country. Which we can certainly <laughs> we can certainly use all the prayers that we can get. A prayer request for a woman who's having problems with her job. Prayer request for Bethany and Chris. And those are our prayer requests for this week. So let's begin our prayers. In the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The fourth glorious mystery is the Assumption. We offer thee, O Lord Jesus, this 19th decade in honor of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary. And we ask of thee, through this mystery, and through the intercession of thy Holy Mother, attend a devotion for so good a mother. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in this now at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls into heaven, especially those who are in most need of thy mercy. May the grace and mystery of the Assumption come down to our souls. Amen. And now we're going to offer prayers to satisfy the uh, indulgence calendar. And also, for these prayers, I want to offer it for Robert, who's slightly under the weather, but did not ask for a prayer request. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, and is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now with the hour of our death. Amen. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our defense against the witness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke and we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. And we pray this as we pray all things in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, I want to mention one other thing about the gospel reading that literally just popped into my head. There are some priests and there's some people in the church who tend to downplay demonic stuff. But, and you know, this is allegorical, this isn't a big deal. But note that where does Jesus show the mercy to the Gentile woman? What's, her, what's the problem that's going on? Demonic possession. Now, if we either believe the Bible or we don't. I say it's a good idea to believe it. And now let's do our closing prayer. And we're going to do that closing prayer in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God of mercy, as we reach out to those seeking you, send forth your Spirit upon this show, upon this station, upon any station that carries this show, and upon all the listeners to this show and the other shows on WQBH, to renew us in faith. Enable us to share the good news of the gospel with loving words and caring deeds so that those who have drifted away may be drawn to your church and follow the way of your son Jesus, who is the way, the truth, and the light. We make our prayer through Jesus our Lord, and we pray this as we pray everything. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I want to bring up one other thing I mentioned earlier. And I do recommend this to you. I mentioned that I will read the forwards and introductions and the concordances in the back of a Bible. And it is a worthwhile thing to do because not only do you learn a little bit about the particular Bible you're reading because all the different versions are different translations, have different rules and so forth. And you learn what's there, what isn't there. And you learn about a version that you have. And make sure you have a proper Catholic version. There's a reason why there's Catholic versions of the Bible, and even some of those are, have different translations. But if they've got the imprimatur, they're legit. Well, that's all the time we have today. I hope you have a great rest of the weekend. And remember, if you're listening to this on the uh, 19th, if you get to St. Bernard's, Plenary Indulgence and available on the Feast of St. Bernard today. So, goodbye, and God bless you all. You are listening to WQPH 89.3 FM, Shirley Fitchburg. And now a word from author Peter and Jimmy, who is the host of Your Prayer Intentions, taking place every Saturday at 12.30 p.m. Whether you're donating money or giving us prayers, without you, we don't go on. And if you do want to help us go on, please consider going to wqphradio.org. There's a donate button there. You can give once, you can give monthly, and it makes a difference. It keeps all of our shows, and we have a great lineup of shows keeps us going and whether you're a fan of uh, your prayer intentions whether you like steve's show benedict's hammer sundays at midnight whether you like brother matthew and brother anthony from from the housetops which is on sundays 10 30 a.m and 4 p.m whether you're a fan of the children's rosary which we have every day at 5 p.m seven days a week whether you like our local matter show which is saturday at 11 or talk catholic which comes right after us at 12 30 larry's music off sunday at 11 a.m 
We have the Shepherd's Pie Saturdays at 1 p.m. Or Dan and Tom with the 13th Apostle, which comes just before us at 11.30. Any of those shows and all the stuff you, you donate, you help these things come out. But what also at the WQPH website, in addition to podcasts of our shows, is the prayer wall. Right on the prayer wall, support WQPH and get WQPH 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on WQPHradio.org. On the WQPH 89.3 FM community calendar, the Father Robert A. Brusso chapter of the Knights of Columbus in Fitchburg, Massachusetts will be sponsoring a showing of the movie Sound of Freedom at Cinema World on John Fitch Highway in Fitchburg, Sunday, August 20th at 6 p.m. To reserve a spot for free tickets, text Marie McAndrew at 864 864- 324-1946. Give your last name and the number of free tickets needed. The snack bar is not included with the free tickets, and donations, if you wish to give them, help support this, will be accepted. Again, that is Sunday, August 20th, 6 p.m. at Cinema World on John Fitch Highway in Fitchburg for the movie Sound of Freedom. This has been the WQPH 89.3 FM Community Calendar. This is Peter and Jemmy, host of Your Prayer Intentions, every Saturday here on 89.3 WQPH Shirley Fitchburg. Do you have a prayer request that you'd like me to pray for or perhaps the whole community? Well, include that prayer request in an email. Specify if you want it on air or off and email that prayer request to WQPH893 at Comcast.net. Let me repeat that. It's WQPH893 at Comcast.net, and we will pray for you. If you have an urgent request that you're looking for immediate prayer, tweet me directly at the Tech Guy blog on Twitter or the Tech Guy blog on Gab. God bless you.